This is going to be a shorter lecture than most of the others, um, and we're going to talk about change of basis. Um, but really, we're just going to talk about what we need to know in order to discuss diagonalization, which is the next very important topic. Um, so what's the idea of change of basis? Well, um, you should always keep in mind that, uh, you know, there are many, let me write this down, so there are many possible bases. You know, for any space, let, let's say Rn. So there are many possible bases for Rn. Um, you know, for example, let's, let's take, um, so let's take R2, okay? So what are all the bases of R2? Well, um, there's the, the standard basis, so recall uh, what we call the standard basis. What is a standard basis for R2? Well, it's a set E1, E2, um, which where E1 is this vector um, 1, 0, E2 is 0, 1. So we call that the standard basis. Certainly this is a basis because these are linearly independent and they span R2. Don't forget also, for in order to be a basis, we need bo both the, the two vectors are linearly independent and they span. Um, but if we're talking about Rn or R2, uh, those are one and the same. Okay, so. Um, okay, but this is just one possible basis. What about another basis? Are there any other bases? Um, sure. So here's another basis. And I'm not even going to be too careful here. I'm just going to write down, um, so I'll call this basis script B. I'm just going to write down two random vectors. Chances are it'll be a basis. I certainly don't want to pick a zero vector. And I don't want to pick something that's a scalar multiple of this first one. So let's say minus one, one. That's a perfectly good basis for R2. Okay. Uh, these are linearly independent and they span R2. So let me just draw a picture of you know what this looks like. Okay, so we have our vector 2, 1. That's going to be this vector here. And then we have minus 1, 1, which is going to be pointing this way. It's not really a 90 degree angle there. Um, but we can use these two vectors to get any vector we want in R2. Right, we can take some combination of this one, some combination of that one. Um, I could have written down any two other vectors as long as the two vectors are linearly independent. That would be a perfectly good basis for R2. Okay. Um, let's take a vector in R2. So consider the vector. Um, oh, how about 4, 3? Okay. Let's think about, uh, so we're going to get philosophical here. Um, what does this really mean? What does this notation really mean? Well, it means you go four, you go four steps this way and you go three steps that way. So the vector four, three is right here. So maybe I'll put a vector four, three on here. But another way to think of this is four, three is a linear combination of the standard basis vectors. What linear combination is it? It's four times E1, right, plus three times E2. Okay, so really these numbers in the vector are the scalars, interestingly enough, of a linear combination of the standard basis. Okay. So the question we're going to look, think about now is, can we do the same, uh, the same thing with a different basis? So, so like what, yeah, what if we wanted to do linear algebra? So can we do linear algebra? You know, basically, can we do everything completely in terms 
of a non-standard basis. Okay. Um, let's let, let's try to do that. So let's uh, let's take uh, for example. We're going to we're, let's use this basis. So we're going to try to do everything in terms of this basis instead. You might think, well, why would we want to do that? That just makes things more complicated. And yes, it does make things more complicated, but we're going to see in the next lecture already um, that there's a very good reason we might want to do that. Okay. So we're going to take this basis, and now we're going to define a notation. So then we will use the notation um okay so what will yeah let's say we have the vector a b well we know what that means that means a times the first standard basis element plus b times the second standard basis element but i'm going to do things differently i'm not going to use a standard basis i'm going to use this script b basis okay so we're going to use this notation with this script b down here to mean this so but but instead of e1 and e2 i'm going to replace it with these two vectors okay so let's call this one b1 and we'll call this vector b2 um so i'm going to use this to mean um a is going to be my scalar times uh well I'll, okay i'll just write the vector times 2 1 plus b that element's going to be my scalar times minus 1 1 Okay, uh, so let's do an example right away. So what is what is this vector? Um, you say let's say one minus three, but with respect to my non-standard basis b. So what what is this vector? It, let's say I want to write it as a normal vector without this script b, just in terms of a standard basis. So do you understand uh, the question here? So this notation here means I have one of that vector and I have minus three of that vector. Ah, so that's easy. So yes, we can write this in terms of the standard basis. It's just one times this plus minus three times uh, my second basis element, right? Because I'm thinking of these as my two basis elements. So one minus three with respect to basis B is actually five uh, minus two with respect to the standard basis. Okay, so, so this is, so if there's nothing here, if we don't have anything there, well, that just means a vector with respect to the standard basis. So it's a vector with respect to the standard basis. Okay. Um, can, can we see what's going on here? So uh, geometrically, so what, what do we really mean by one minus three with respect to B? We mean we're taking one of this vector here. Okay, that's my vector B1, that's my vector B2. We're taking one of that vector, and then we're taking minus 3 of b2. So let's try to draw that. So I'm taking one of b1, then I'm going this way three times. Okay. I guess you can draw it like this also. So I'm taking, here's minus 3 b2. And if I add these two, I get this point here. Okay. That point there is 5 minus 2 with respect to our standard basis. But that point is also, we can describe it as 3b1, uh, or sorry, not 3b1. Um, where's my white at? There you go. Um, 1b1, and then minus 3b2. Oh, ah, with respect to b. Don't forget to write that. <laughs> so these are the same vector, just uh, using different bases to describe them. Um, okay, let's say we have our original vector 4, 3 here. 
um, and, and we, we, can, we can sort of go the other way. So let's say we have a vector in the standard basis. So 4, 3 means 4 times e1 plus 3 times e2. But what is this vector 4, 3? Can I, can I convert this to the basis script to b? So what is this with respect to the non-standard basis uh, script b? In other words, um, how can I express 4, 3 as a linear combination of these two vectors? So, uh, yeah, so this is something I'll call x1 times 2, 1 plus something else times minus 1, 1. Right? So, how, so, so, in other words, what are the coefficients, x1 and x2? And those will be... So my answer will be this, x1, x2, with respect to b, okay? Because again, the scalars in the linear combination are the elements in this vector, right? just by definition of, of this notation, right? Um, well, we've done this kind of problem a zillion times, right? <laughs> um, another way to write this is, uh, it's the matrix, right? 2, 1, minus 1, 1 times x1, x2, right? The, we defined this matrix vector product to mean um, a linear combination of the columns, where the, these are the scalars in the linear combination, right? Uh, so we want to find the x1 and x2 to satisfy this equation. Um, there are many ways to do this. We can do Gaussian elimination. Um, but uh, one thing we, we should also recall is there's sort of a one-step way to do this, uh, to solve this linear system here, which is we can multiply by, uh, multiply both sides of this equation by the inverse of this matrix, okay? Um, yeah, so um, one other thing I want to mention, this matrix has a name, so... Uh, you know, notice in this example, too, we could have written this as, you know, it's the matrix 2 minus 1, 1, 1 times 1 minus 3. And we got 5 minus 2. Okay, so to, to convert something with respect to basis B to the standard basis, it's, it just amounts to multiplication by this matrix. And we call this the change of basis matrix. What is it changing? It's changing from what basis to what basis? It's changing from uh, from the basis B, script B, to the standard basis. Um, is that right? Yeah, so this is in terms of script B. And then we take this linear combination, we get something in terms of the standard basis. Okay. And notice, oh, we just have the basis vectors as the columns. Okay, my basis B. Um, okay, let me call this, uh, this uh, U. This matrix is going to be U. Okay, so how do I find X1, X2? Well, X1, X2, in this problem, is just going to be, um, I'm going to multiply both sides by U inverse on the left. You have to keep in track, you have to keep track of what side you're multiplying on, right, when we're dealing with matrices. So multiplying on the left, this cancels, and I get U in, I'll just write U inverse times uh, 4, 3. But what is U inverse? Um, let's do that over here. So remember for 2 by 2 matrices, we had a formula, which is 1 over AD minus BC, which, by the way, that's the determinant. Um, so 2 minus negative 1 is 3 times. And then if it was A, B, C, D, we have D, A, along the diagonal, so we switch these two, and then this one is minus b minus c, okay? So that's u inverse right there. Um, okay, so what what do we have to do here? We have to do u inverse, which is, uh, well, let me write it, let me multiply through the third. So it's one third, one third. Um, did I do that right? I think so, yeah. Um, minus one third, two thirds. 
Okay. Um, let's do inverse. And uh, yeah, we had to multiply by 4, 3. And what we get is 7 thirds up here. And then we have minus 4 thirds plus 6 thirds. That's uh, 2 thirds, I think. Okay, so 4, 3 with respect to the basis B is that. And I need to write with respect to B. Okay. So, um, what is this saying? It's saying that 4, 3 is 7 thirds times my first basis vector. Okay, can we kind of see this on here? Um, well, 7 thirds times B1. Go do it in another color. So there's B1. Here's 6 thirds. 7 thirds is maybe like that. Okay. And then I need to do plus two-thirds of uh, B2. So two-thirds B2 takes me to about here, and if I add the two vectors, I get, I should get that point, okay? So hopefully you can see the picture here. So this is seven-thirds B1, and right here that's two-thirds B2. So I can express four-thirds as, yeah. Again, this notation means seven-thirds times my first basis vector plus two-thirds times my second basis vector. Um, okay, let's kind of summarize what we did. So so in general, uh, so uh, how do we say this? Um, yeah, if, um, let's say script B, and now I'll just be very general. So let's say V1, V2, up to Vn. Uh, if this is a basis, for Rn, then how do we um, how do we change from this basis to the standard basis? Um, well, we multiply our vector by a um, by a matrix, and a matrix is just going to have these v's as columns. So then a let's call it. Um, I mean, I guess I use a notation u. We use that, note, that same notation. So U, what is U? U is a matrix where these basis vectors are my columns. Okay, so just make it clear, those are the columns. So this is the change of basis matrix. But again, what is it? We're changing from what basis to what basis? Well, if we have an element with respect to this basis B, then multiplying by this matrix um, is just going to write it as a standard vector, right? So you have this many of that vector, that many, some number of this vector, all the way up to some number of that vector. Um, and again, yeah, if, if we're multiplying by something with respect to B, the numbers in that vector just represent the scalars in the linear combination. Um, so this is a change of basis matrix from the basis B um, to the standard basis. Um, okay, what if we had a vector that was uh, a vector in terms of the standard basis and we wanted to convert to the basis B. Um, so then, um, we just multiply by the inverse of this matrix, as we saw. So U inverse, inverse of that matrix there. This is the change of basis matrix. From the standard basis, we start with something in the standard basis, like 4, 3 in this example, and see we just multiply by the, that inverse matrix, and then we got something in uh, in terms of the basis B. So this is a change of basis uh, matrix from the standard basis to the basis B. Okay. Um, 
Great. So we can change from one basis to another pretty easily. You just multiply by a certain matrix. And that matrix is very easy to construct. We just put the basis elements as the columns. Um, okay. So I could end the lecture here, but, I, but, but there's one more thing that we're going to need, um, which is um, writing a linear transformation in terms of a basis, a non-standard basis. What do I mean by that? Um, okay, so writing a linear transformation in terms of a non-standard basis. Um, okay, I'm not going to that. Let's, uh, let me give you an example to, you know, just to give you an idea of what we're talking about. So. Let's suppose we have uh, the matrix A, and it's going to be, you know, let's do one that we understand very well geometrically. So 0, 1, minus 1, 0. You might recall this, um, so this is a rotation, is a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. Um, but this is in the language of a standard basis. So this is in terms of the standard basis. So what do I mean by that? Um, I mean, this first column is where one zero gets sent. This is where the, the vector E1 gets sent. Okay. And that second column is where E2 gets sent. What if I'm working on a different basis like this one? Okay, and I want the first column to mean where that vector gets sent, and the second column to mean where that vector gets sent. <laughs> um, well, that, that might be kind of tricky, right? So, um, so, so yeah, the, the question is, can we find a matrix? Uh, so can we find a matrix? And, uh, okay, so I should be a little bit more clear. This matrix is not a rotation. The linear transformation associated to that matrix is a rotation, right? Just to be perfectly precise there. Um, so this matrix is representing that transformation. Multiplication by this matrix gives the transformation. Uh, so, so yeah, can we find a matrix? Um, let's call it B, not script B. I guess I'm using the letter B too much, um, but that's okay. So can we find a matrix B that represents the same geometric rotation, yeah, so, so it represents this rotation. It's the same 90 degree counterclockwise rotation, um, but with respect to B, to my non-standard basis. Okay. Um, yes, and here's how I do that. So um, I'm going to let you be to change a matrix be the change, change of basis matrix. What was our change of basis matrix? It was just um, 2, 1. I just put the basis elements as my columns, minus 1, 1. What does this do? What does multiplication by this matrix do? do? Well, we can interpret it as changing a vector with respect to this basis into some vector with respect to the standard basis. Um, so so uh, I, I just want to be clear here. So, so what if we take a, a, a vector um, with respect to our basis B and we multiply by this matrix? It's actually not going to, um, it's not, you're not going to get something that's a 90 degree Counterclockwise rotation, actually. Um, you can try that. For example, what if I take the vector 1, 0 with respect to V? What does 1, 0 mean? It means one of this vector, <laughs> right? So it means B1. Okay, and then if I multiply by this uh, matrix, um, so I multiply 1, 0 by this matrix, I'm going to get 0, 1. What does 0, 1 mean with respect to B? It means B2. But you see, B2 is not a 90 degree rotation to B1. Okay, so we can't just take the same matrix and multiply things with, uh, that are you know, with respect to our 
new basis. What we have to do is we have to change from B to, uh, so, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take U, I'm going to change, um, let's say I have a vector with respect to my basis B. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply by U. This is now my same vector with respect to the standard basis. I'm now gonna do the rotation with respect to the standard basis. Okay, and again, I'm writing on the left because I wanna do this first. I wanna do U first, then A. Okay, I did the rotation, but now this is in terms of the standard basis. I wanna go back to the basis B. So what should I multiply by next? I do this, but the inverse. Okay, so, so, so yeah, what, what, what are we doing here? So this um, changes from, this goes from B to the standard basis. And this is the rotation with respect to the standard basis. Okay, so we do the rotation because again, this uh, th this one only works. You know, you can only use this matrix if we're if we're using the standard basis. Uh, but now that we've done the rotation, we'll convert back to B. So this one converts the standard basis back to our non-standard basis B. Okay. Let's uh, let's try this out. So what is I mean, what is this in our in our problem? Um, I don't want to talk too much longer, but yeah, this is, oh, we calculated U inverse before, right? That was um, one third times uh, one minus one, one, two, it turned out. And I'm gonna multiply by A. So that's my transformation. It's a very neat idea, I think, right? So we can still use that same matrix, but we just have to convert to the standard basis, then do that one, then convert back. Um, so yeah, again, this matrix over here is converting from the non-standard basis script B to the standard basis. And I'm doing the rotation that I'm converting back. Um, okay, so what is uh, this going to be? Should we do this calculation? Let's do it just so we can see it working. Um, so I'll multiply the last two matrices together first. I, I don't know about you, but I can't multiply three matrices together at the same time. Um, okay, this is gonna be minus one, minus one, two, Minus one. Okay, now let's multiply uh, the these two matrices together. So, um, so I get one, and then I get minus two, and then I get uh, five. Is that right? Yeah, I think five, and then I get uh, one minus two, which is minus one. Okay, and then we'll multiply through the third. So we get one third uh, minus two thirds, five thirds, and minus one third. This matrix represents, so let's, yeah, what is this matrix? This represents a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation with respect to my non-standard basis script B. What is this matrix telling me? This first column is telling me where B1 gets sent. <laughs> so this is where, maybe I'll write it like this. It's where one zero, with respect to B, get sent. And this is where, under my linear transformation, where zero one with respect to B gets sent. Okay. What is one zero with respect to B? It's, uh, it's this vector two one in our example. Okay. So let, yeah, let's try it. Let's see where um, our vector 2, 1 gets sent. 2, 1 with respect to the standard basis, but with respect to B, that's called 1, 0, right? <laughs> um, okay, where does this get sent? It gets sent to, well, 
We know how this works. It's the first column. But this is still with respect to B. Okay, so this matrix is doing everything in the language of this non-standard basis, script B. And it actually means, a, this matrix means, it represents a 90 degree clockwise rotation if you do it with you know, elements in a non-standard basis. So we put something in with respect to a non-standard basis, we get something out with respect to a non-standard basis. Can we see this one third, five thirds as being a 90 degrees rotation? Um, let's go, I mean, this picture is getting a little bit too, um, too cluttered, but where should a 90 degrees rotation send us? It should send us uh, just in a third color, maybe. Um, oh, I lost my ruler somewhere. Um, Oh, here it is. This is where we want this vector B1 to get sent. If this is truly representing a uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation, okay, so that should get sent there. But it gets sent to one third, five thirds in terms of B. So it's, what does that mean? It means one third of this vector plus five thirds of that vector. There's three thirds of that vector. And I think five thirds is gonna take me there. Nice. So, yeah, we can see this matrix as representing a 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation. Just to summarize that idea again, you know, this is a matrix with respect to the standard basis. If we want to convert this to a matrix with respect to the non-standard basis that does the same transformation geometrically, um, we, we do that in three steps. So we take our non-standard basis vector convert it to the standard basis vector, then apply the transformation, then we convert back, okay, to script B. Okay, very cool. Um, okay, so I think that's all we need to talk about diagonalization. Um, but I can't, I can't resist, you know, one one thing, this will be quick. So, So what if we wanted to convert Maybe I'll leave this as a question for you, actually. I'll see what the answer is, too. But um, what if we want to convert from, uh, from, you know, let's say we have script B1, <laughs> some non-standard basis, to some other non-standard basis. So we don't want, <laughs> we just totally want to uh, forget about the standard basis. We, we have a non-standard basis B1 and some other non-standard basis V2. We want to convert a vector, you know, it looks like, you know, something with respect to B1 into something with respect to B2. Um, how do we do that? Well, let's suppose U1, or, or let's just call it U, is the change of basis matrix. From, I mean, what? How does the change of basis come matrix come about? It, it, it's, it's it's always going from a basis to the standard basis, right? So B one to the standard basis. And let's let V be the so V is the change of basis matrix. So how are this U and V constructed again? So, well, let me tell you what V is first. It's going from B2 to the standard basis. Um, so, how do we get U? Well, we just take the elements of this B1 and put them into the columns. Right? And that matrix, multiplication by that matrix, converts something from with respect to B1 into the standard basis. Um, so, here's a question for you. You should pause the video after I ask this. Um, try to come up with it yourself. Um, so what matrix, in terms of this U and V, would represent a change of basis from B1 to B2? So see if you can figure that out. Uh, pause the video and then I'll see the answer in a moment. Okay, so hopefully you were able to think through this. Um, 
So if I want to change from B1 to B2, but I only have these two matrices, U and V, I mean, these are very easy to write down, right? So I just write the columns of B1, that's U, and V is the columns of this basis B2. Um, yeah, so how would I go from B1 to B2? Well, I use the standard basis um, to, to sort of link these two, right? So first I convert from B1 to the standard basis. That's done with U. So again, I'm imagining I have a vector over here because again, how do you use these matrices? You just do matrix vector multiplication, right? So I'm imagining I have some vector here. I'm gonna multiply by this matrix U first, okay? Then I have something with respect to the standard basis. I wanna convert standard basis to B, B2. I should not write down V because V is the opposite. It converts V2 to the stand, B2 to the standard basis. But I should write down V inverse. Right, so U converts B1 to the standard basis, then V inverse converts the standard basis to B2. So this matrix V inverse U Actually, if I multiply that by something with respect to B1, so I'll just show you how it works. If I multiply it by some vector with respect to B1, I get the same vector, but it's now with respect to B2. Okay, so it'll be different numbers there than here, but these will represent the same vector geometrically. Okay, so that's change of basis from B1 to B2. If you wanna go from B2 to B1, I'm sure you can figure out um, what I should write there instead. Um, Okay, so that's all I want to say about change of basis.